Hitting his career in the late 1950s, Henry Darrow was one of the very few Hispanics on television. But it was Mr. Darrow's characterization of a young Mexican vaquero that became his signature role and had Henry targeted as TV's first Latin heartthrob. Let's take a look at the career of the amazing Mr. Henry Darrow. Uh, it was pretty good. I was born and raised in New York, Manhattan, and I lived there for a number of years and then moved to Puerto Rico when I was 12, where my parents are from. Uh, the different schools that I went to, the teachers uh, kept giving me programs and uh, stories to read, and I wasn't embarrassed to read them out loud in front of the class. And uh, one teacher in particular, Mrs. Levine, called my mother in and said, uh, Henry has a facility for talking to people and not afraid to uh, talk and recite poems and things like that. And she said, you might think about him wanting to uh, perform. And so I did. It was wonderful. Uh, I didn't know that uh, there are many actors who had portrayed Zorro, or Italian, or German, or whatever country they were from. And being the first Latino was good. Zorro and Son was a five-part short series by Disney Studios. And uh, in this one, Zorro had a son, and he converted him into another Zorro, so to speak. And the best show was the last show we did. Unfortunately, the pilot was not too good. And uh, that, uh, that lasted, I don't know, a couple of months to shoot. And uh, we had a good time, though. He never took all day to do my laundry. I'm so easy on capes. <laughs> Something's wrong. What if Bernardo has been taken? Kidnapped? Yes. If it's true, I'm sure Zorro would ride to the rescue. I'm sure of one more thing. Zorro would be riding in his underwear. <laughs> Bernardo has the outfits, remember. And Zorro's father, I was the father of Duncan Regeer, who's a fine actor, and he played Zorro and I played his dad. I replaced Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. after the first year of the series we shot it in Spain. And uh, there were some good times. I did not realize I had made a mistake in wearing a black hat, a leather jacket, woolen pants and a heavy shirt and I was going to work in Tucson four or five weeks at a time. It was miserable conditions, but it was fun doing it. Yes, excellent. It was fun. Did you keep in touch over the years? No. After the show, you just sort of go your own way. And you go looking for other jobs, another work, another things to do. So, but uh, there were one or two that remained friends. I would want to work with Paul Muni. He was an actor in the 40s who worked for one of the big studios. And he played major historical characters, uh, and he was a fine actor. And, I, and also um, Orson Welles, I enjoyed his Citizen Kane. Hollywood, there are a lot of little theaters, and once you establish yourself and make a name, 
you can play those mighty seat theaters and command a fair audience, but also help young actors and actresses work their way up. Well, just stay with it. Try not to ever give up. And a couple of times it comes close. Or you're married and you have a child and things are a little rough and then you get a job and you work for two days for $300 a day or $200 a day and that, that can carry you over for the rest of the month. My chaparral. That was a fun character. Mexican rogue. He had a good time. Yes, <laughs> they partnered me with uh, attractive ladies, and that was nice. Winning the Emmy was big. Um, he and I are on a quest for the most beautiful lady. I can tell by looking in your eyes that you are a very honest man that you will let us go and not block our way. Give me the keys. From Santa Barbara, Henry Darrow. And the winner is... Henry Darrow. That soap opera I played, a magician who had left his wife and son, and the son was played by A. Martinez, who also won the Emmy for lead actor in that series at the same time. You're always gonna be drawn back here, back home, Cruz. And uh, that was fun. Henry's not here tonight, so he'd like me to read this note for him. I'd like to thank the members of the Academy, my fellow actors, and production team at Santa Barbara for bestowing this honor on me. Thank you. I was working in Spain on Zorro, and when I got the news, it was just my mother was visiting, so that really all worked out well. And then, of course, getting cast uh, as Manolito on our chaparral, that was, that was big. It's time to be not quite so serious. To my beloved Victoria, I dedicate this song that I'm going to make up right now. Ay, 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 ay. Oh, how I love Fiesta. Ay, 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 ay. Let's dance all through the night. about by a play I did called The Wonderful Ice Cream Suit by Ray Bradbury. And uh, we opened in Hollywood. And he saw the play and a year and a half later, there was a series called High Chaparral and there was a character in it, in it that I could play and uh, they hired me. The rest is history. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I like to play chess. Oh, I was a good chess player many, many years ago. But uh, I still have an interest in it. And on occasion, I have uh, continued to play with friends. Well, whatever you choose to do, try and stay at it as best you can. Don't let uh, things that go wrong stop you. Just keep on going, keep on going. Well, thank you for the interview. Thank you.